What's up, guys? It's Coach Gaglione here, and this is another edition of our Stage Ready series. In fact, this is the first episode. So if this is your first time stopping by, I'm Coach Gaglione, and uh, I've been involved with powerlifting and strength coaching for over 14 years. I've been a competitive powerlifter for, uh, since 2006. Uh, I've coached a lot of people from all walks of life, and uh, this particular year uh, has been uh, one of the final stages of my weight loss journey. For this chapter of my life anyway, uh, I've been as heavy as 340 pounds. Uh, nine years ago, I was 340 pounds, and then uh, my weight has yo-yoed up and down uh, for, for the past nine years. Uh, and then back in 2000, uh, excuse me, back five years ago, I squatted 900 pounds in competition. My weight was ballooned back up to 335, and I've been on a weight loss journey. I've lost over 120 pounds. At the time of this taping, I'm just under 210, and i uh, been getting ready for my first bodybuilding show. Uh, I really wanted to kind of take this transformation to the next level. And for context, this is really, at this point, I'm very happy with my body. I'm happy with my health. Uh, my body fat is consistently under 15%, um, down from four, over 40%, which is uh, crazy. Um, it's the leanest, the healthiest, and the best, the best my joints and body has felt my entire life, including uh, my high school years. So this is not really a journey about the physical self or the physical body anymore. To me, it's more about a mental challenge, and I want to show people what's possible. So I could stop now, but um, I made a decision uh, back in back this year that I was going to do a bodybuilding show. Uh, originally, it was it was projected for May thirtieth, the Long Island Championships, uh, and due to the coronavirus, that was canceled. The second show I entered on June twenty seventh, canceled. So we're trying for third time's a charm, hopefully. So I'm look, aiming for August 1st. Uh, and regardless of whatever happens uh, that's out of my control, um, I'm going to be stage ready. I'm going to be stage ready on August 1st, uh, and that's the goal. So uh, I'm hoping it will be an official stage, and if not, uh, we will. it'll happen at some point. But that is going to be kind of my end date right now. And we're going to take this uh, bodybuilding journey as far as we can from now until August 1st. So the time of this taping, we're about eight weeks out. And um, uh, right now, my leanest ever, we're actually uh, just going up from a, a little bit of a calorie refeed, uh, reverse diet, if you will. Uh, but today, I want to focus on what my training is looking like, and specifically the weight training, uh, the resistance training. So one of the biggest mistakes people have made is actually um, not doing strength training when they're trying to lose body fat and trying to weight loss. So I'm still using a lot of resistance training. Uh, I'm not necessarily doing a ton of heavy powerlifting right now. Uh, but I want to kind of go through my resistance training routine. You're going to get a, uh, an inside look, a sneak peek of what that's looking like. So on the first day is kind of a pressing day, and we're kind of doing some warming up with some kind of band presses and flies, if you will, uh, trying to get a good contraction uh, at the top range of motion to kind of warm up the pecs and the shoulders and also kind of fin uh, switching that up with some band pull-aparts, some type of rear delt exercise. So I'm kind of, again, supersetting a lot. You're going to notice a lot of supersets here in the program, uh, and that's going to improve training density so we can get more work done in less time. Uh, after that, the second movement was uh, a duffalo bar, which is essentially a cambered bar, so it's going to extend the range of motion. So to get a deeper stretch in the pecs, we did a duffalo bar. Uh, now, so the downside of the duffalo bar, since it is an extended range of motion, it does put your shoulder in a vulnerable position if you don't have a lot of shoulder extension. Uh, so one of the things we did to mitigate that, to make it mechanically a little bit more efficient, we did a duffalo bar versus 80 pounds of chain. And uh, the chains are a form of accommodating resistance, which makes it heavier at the top and lighter at the bottom, where you're the most vulnerable and you're mechanically the weakest. And it's heaviest at the top when the chains are off the floor and when you're at the strongest. So that's a great way to, uh, to really mitigate some of those issues uh, for any type of pressing or squatting movements, uh, especially with a barbell, which could be sometimes potentially uh, a little bit more joint stress. So that was our, uh, and we superseded that with some kettlebell rear delts as well. So I kind of like to, you know, again, use some antagonist muscle groups. So while my chest was resting, I was kind of working the rear delt. And you can see a lot of these movements with the upper back, a common theme is I'm really trying to get my shoulder blades kind of apart uh, to kind of help with that kind of back thickness, if you will. So after that, we did a little bit of a, a superset. Uh, again, I did some uh, push-ups with an extended range of motion holding the dumbbells. 
Um, and then I did some hammer curls to work and uh, some regular curls. So kind of, you know, the difference between a kind of a hammer curl, you're going to use more of a, a semi-supinated or a neutral grip, uh, which is going to work a different, uh, I believe, the brachialis, so a different part of the bicep, uh, whereas when you're fully supinating or when your palm is up, uh, that's going to work your bicep a little bit differently. So we're definitely kind of working in hammer curls as well as your kind of more traditional curls where you're going through, um, you might go from like a, neutral or semi-supinated position to a fully supinated position where your palm is facing up. Uh, one of the things that we've been working on with the biceps is thinking about the cue of driving the pinky up toward the ceiling. Um, and a lot of these things we're, we're working on different, uh, not just moving the, mu the uh, moving the body, but also engaging the muscles. So when I'm doing these kettlebell push-ups, I'm also thinking about kind of pulling my elbows together, even though it's not possible, that's my intent. And that's going to put uh, the emphasis more on my chest uh, versus the triceps. And then from there, we did a little bit more uh, kind of uh, arm. You'll see some arm and uh, tricep work. You'll see I did it using uh, this really cool apparatus, a spreader bar. So you can see a lot of these handles are going to be more accommodating to the body, so they're not fixed. Uh, so we're going to use a lot more uh, apparatuses that are not fixed as well. Uh, so again, some, some kind of preacher type curls, some spider curls, if you will, to really stretch the biceps. So you get, a lot of these exercises, we're trying to get a full, a good stretch on the muscle and then a good peak contraction. So we're kind of attacking these muscles from different angles. And then we finished with some side laterals. And a lot of times with these side laterals, I tend to uh, do as many full range reps as I can, and then go into partial reps to really kind of extend the set and just get a lot of muscle activation as well. So that's the first day. Um, so that is uh, day one. Day two, uh, arguably, it's one of my favorites, also one of the harder workouts. And uh, we did, a, we rigged up uh, using a, a glute ham raise. We uh, rigged up a, a nice little band leg extension and band leg curl. So we did a seated leg curl and seated leg extension superset, as well as some hanging uh, leg raises in between. So this was fun. This was a cool day. Um, it can be cumbersome to try to set up uh, these things, but this worked out pretty well. One of the things that we did to mitigate some of the issues of uh, the height, uh, we used a, a pad. Uh, to uh, prop up our bodies for the leg extensions, and that seemed to work pretty well. Um, and we kind of played with the tension there. So uh, if you don't have access to machines, this, this worked really well. Just need to make sure you have a strong anchor point for the leg extensions and the leg curls. Uh, but this was really great. We did high reps on these. So this is a really great way to, to also pre-exhaust the muscle, uh, get some blood around the knees before you do any type of squatting. So that's one of the things that uh, really common in bodybuilders, they would do some isolation work first to kind of get the muscles warm, get some blood in there uh, before doing their compound lifts, which is one of the biggest differences between the powerlifting training uh, that I found in the bodybuilding style training. So on this particular day, uh, we did a belt squat. We used Matt Winning's belt squat machine and we did a lot of band tension again. So the benefit of adding the band tension is uh, obviously the belt squat is very spine friendly, but depending on how you do it and depending on uh, if you are proficient with the machine or not, or your anthrop anthropometry, uh, it could put some stress on the knees, especially if you're trying to do a more quad dominant squat. So one way to mitigate that uh, is by adding band tension. Again, so when it's mechanically, when you're mechanically stronger, uh, it's gonna be heavier at the top, stimulating a little bit more quad and glute activation to kind of teach you to push through the movement. And at the bottom where your knees might be more vulnerable uh, to some shear forces and things like that, you're gonna be more unloaded. So uh, we did some uh, belt squats with Matt Wennings and I did some different sets that were more quad dominant and some sets that were more hip dominant. Uh, typically on this day, I tend to use it more as a leg day. So I do more of a quad dominant style squat where I'm more upright and my knees are more forward. And I would superset that with some donkey style calf raises, if you will, um, with the belt squat machine as well. So, so kind of leaning over and trying to get a big stretch in my calves. So the belt squat machine is also an excellent, um, an excellent tool for uh, the calf raise. And then superset of that in between, I used some uh, short bands from Elite FTS. Um, to work my outer hips. So this is a, this is a seated abduction slash external rotation. So I'm just really trying to focus on driving the knees out and working the outer hip here. Uh, great exercise uh, to work your outer hip and it's also a great exercise if you're trying to uh, improve your hip strength for powerlifting as well. And then from there, we did another uh, superset. So I did some uh, glute ham raise uh, sit-ups, uh, crunches. So just some controlled spinal flexion and not trying to use a lot of momentum on these. And then I uh, did some glute, uh, glute ham raise uh, as well. So I'm trying to focus on doing a leg, a leg, a hip extension into a leg curl. 
So a lot of people will kind of mess, mess these up um, by overextending the back too much. And then from there, I did a little bit of a barbell uh, hyperextension. So this was really kind of uh, destroyed the, ha the hammies uh, and the glutes here. So that was a really good uh, lower body day. This was a lot of fun. Did some drop sets there. And then on day three, uh, we did a little um, stretchers on the lat pull down. So essentially, you're kind of starting in a really fully stretched position of the lats and then extending the back and extending the shoulders at the same time. So it almost is like a hybrid pull down row. And it did some fat bull shrugs after that. So this is day three is kind of like a back emphasis day. We did some seal rows uh, with the Kabuki trap bar. That was fun. So we used some different grips there. Uh, and then in between, uh, we did some upright rows and lateral raises after that. Then from there, I did some heavy one-arm dumbbell rows, uh, really trying to get a good stretch in the lat and pulling toward the hip there. And then some tricep uh, extensions in between. And then from there, uh, some more upper back work uh, as well, just some kind of uh, pullover type motions and some other upper back work to finish up and some more triceps to finish that. particular day. On um, day four, uh, it's going to be another upper body kind of pressing emphasis day. So we did, uh, again, some more band work uh, with the reverse flies. I used some of the gray cook bands on this particular day that worked really well for the reverse flies and uh, the pec, uh, pec flies as well. So the cook bands are typically used for physical therapy. Uh, in this particular case, we use it for kind of getting some blood in the pecs. And then after that, we did a little axle incline press and then some uh, pull-ups and upper back work in between. I really enjoy the axle bar. Uh, some of the benefits of a thick bar training is going to be it's going to make the surface area bigger so it's a little bit easier on the joints. Uh, another kind of benefit of it is actually reduces the range of motion a little bit. So something like an incline press, uh, not everyone is able to maybe go to a quote-unquote full range of motion to their chest comfortably. So the axle bar makes a little bit of a shorter range of motion. So while you're getting, so it's, it's some great benefit fat bar standpoint and a little bit easier on the shoulders from the range of motion standpoint. If you did have a lot of range of motion, and you did want a bigger stretch, you could use fat grips in place of the axle bar and that would actually extend the range of motion since it only makes the, the part where you grab thicker and not the middle of the bar. So that's a consideration as well, if depending on what your goals are and your mobility uh, uh, capability. From there, we did some fat bell pressing and some more upper back work in between. I really like the center mass bells. They're a little bit uh, more close to your joint as opposed to the dumbbell where you have to deal with more of the inertia that kind of goes outside of your wrists and hands. Uh, so the fat bells are really comfortable. Uh, you could also go a little bit deeper with them. So I really enjoy the center mass bells, especially for pressing, but a lot of different movements. So great, great option if you have access to them. And then again, some more upper back work in between. So that was a good, uh, fun uh, superset there. And then from there, we did some uh, some more some curls as well as some. I did some bottoms up overhead presses to kind of work my shoulders a little bit and also work the stabilizers. So bottoms up pressing, uh, a lot of times is used for in physical therapy type situations. Uh, your grip strength uh, has been kind of linked to shoulder health. So if you're able to stabilize. If your shoulder is not healthy, you won't be able to stabilize the joint, uh, to my understanding. So there's some better physical therapists that can explain it better than me. But that's kind of the rationale for me using the bottoms up press there. It's going to limit the weight I could do a little bit and make sure I'm getting uh, good shoulder stability because that's been an issue that I've had in the past. And then from there, uh, we did some more curls and winning triceps, which is like a chest-supported tricep kickback, which has been one of my favorites. Uh, really good contraction at the top, and it's really shoulder and elbow friendly, so definitely give that a try. Uh, this is my preferred way to do a kickback. I don't really like to do kickbacks without chest support, so learn this from Matt Wenning. Great tricep movement, and uh, he has some very strong triceps, so it's definitely <laughs> worth a try.
Uh, he has a 600 pound close grip bench to his credit, so there's definitely something to be uh, said there. Day five might be my second favorite day. It's another leg day, another killer. Uh, we started off with some Ukrainian deadlifts, I think they call them, but essentially to it's a deficit stiff leg dead. We did it with a kettlebell standing on blocks. This is really fun. Uh, we did a, a little tricep. We did that with a glute bridge with uh, R&T, so with a hip circle or short band above the knees. And then what was the other? And then we did some uh, TKE terminal knee extension sissy squats. This is a great option again if you don't have a leg extension machine. It's just a very short terminal knee extension with the band. So the bands are kind of pulling your knees forward and you need to pull your knees kind of backward and flex the quads. Great exercise. Looks kind of silly, uh, but it's an excellent, excellent way. And then if you kind of do a squat with it, some people call it like a Spanish squat, but just like a very, very good exercise for the quads and teaches you to uh, extend the knees. Um, and if you are someone like a power lifter who has trouble uh, locking out the knees at a deadlift, this is a great exercise to correct soft knees as well. So again, we did the TKEs, the Ukrainian deadlift and the glute bridges first. And then we did did some ab wheel rollouts, superset with a belt squat good morning. Uh, experimented with a, with actually a sled harness on this particular day. And this made it a little bit more glute emphasis since the anchor point was lower and actually like right directly under my hip. Um, in the past, I've done them with a front squat harness, which was made it a little bit more of an upper back emphasis. So both are good if you have a lower back injury or uh, some issues there. Uh, the front the front squat harness will be a little bit more challenging, won't be able to use as much weight. So the sled harness would be good if you want to just make it more glute dominant and take your lower back and upper back a little bit more out of the equation. If you want to work your entire posterior chain and your entire back, I like the front squat harness. So we'll kind of show some examples of both, but I just, uh, since I did a little bit of a promo video and I deadlifted uh, 495 for a triple, um, the day before, just on a, as an extra workout to promo our heat wave meet, I did 495 with about 120 pounds of band tension for a triple. Uh, just like with the uh, belt squats we talked about on day two, on day five, we did a leg. We're going to do a leg press against bands. So same thing. The leg press can potentially um, aggravate some people's knees in the bottom or create, you know, so that sort of thing. So by using band tension as the primary resistance that mitigates there, error, uh, I did finish off with some Copenhagen planks. Uh, that's going to work the obliques and adductors. Uh, that was fun. Uh, I was really tired at this point, so I only did a, like two sets. And then some uh, Bulgarian split squats to finish up to work single leg, one leg at a time to work some balance there. Then final day, day six, uh, we did a little dip, a little dip and chin up superset. This is a little bit of an easier day in terms of intensity, in terms of uh, joint stress. Uh, not a lot of, as many barbells in this particular day or like really uh, big compound movements. Uh, but the dips and chins are really great for kind of working your whole body. Today we did it with elevated kettlebells to uh, kind of force you to stabilize a little bit and slow down the eccentric. After that, we did some wide grip lat pull downs with machines and bands. Uh, and really, again, trying to really stretch the up the back and, sh and move the shoulder blades upward. And then from there, when we did a barbell tricep overextension, uh, really trying to, again, stretch the tricep fully and extend at the top. And then from there, I just finished off with some face pulls and triceps uh, in a big uh, superset fashion. So to kind of recap again, so it's six days a week. Uh, it's four upper body days and two lower body days. One day is kind of really kind of focused on back, uh, and two days is kind of like a, a, you know more uh, you know full body for full upper body I should say. So we're kind of covering all our bases. I'll kind of start to go into more uh, depth in terms of cardio and diet in future episodes, but I want to kind of give a little bit of a layout of what my training has looked like the past couple of months and what's to come. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, you know, this is the leanest I've been. This has been a really great journey for me. Uh, I'm not quitting powerlifting. I'm just kind of uh, going back and forth between focusing on hypertrophy and focusing on strength. Uh, and I'm really excited to kind of share this journey with you. So if this uh, video helped you, uh, please like it. Please subscribe. Please check out the links below if you want to support the program. Uh, and thank you guys so much for watching our first episode in the Stage Ready series. And until next time, stay strong. We'll see you soon.